On Monday, I released my video outlining Eric Lerner's Active Galactic Nuclei model. As I was finalizing it, a story broke that a study recently conducted had captured galaxies undergoing rapid and dramatic changes. Could this provide more proof of Eric Lerner's plasmoid model? We know that galaxies come in a wide variety of shapes, sizes and brightness. What we term ordinary galaxies, like our Milky Way, are visible because of the light from its stars. An active galaxy shines brightest at its centre where the active galactic nuclei sits. In the mainstream model this is powered by a supermassive black hole, and in Lerner's model by a plasmoid. In both cases it would consume nearby plasma and emit vast amounts of light and radiation. In between these, there is another class known as the Low Ionization Nuclear Emission Line Region Galaxies, LINERS for short. These account for about a third of all galaxies in the known universe. Astronomers have fiercely debated the main source of light emissions from these types of galaxies. Some argue that star forming regions produce the most light, while others claim it has a weak active galactic nuclei. A team of astronomers observed six of these galaxies suddenly and surprisingly transforming into ravenous quasars, and they think that they have discovered a new type of black hole activity at the center of these six galaxies. What is more remarkable is that these were discovered in the first nine months of this study. Now these types of changes had previously been noted in safer galaxies, and here they thought that the reason for the change was due to the angle of observation, but this new evidence suggests that it is more likely to do with changes inside of the active galactic nuclei. What is interesting is how rapidly these liner galaxies were able to change, and they state, it is surprising that any galaxy can change its look on human timescales. These changes are taking place much more quickly than we can explain with our current quasar theory. It will take some work to understand what can disrupt a galaxy's accretion structure and cause these changes on such a short order. The forces at play must be very extreme and very dramatic. So am I personally surprised by these findings? No. If we follow Lerner's plasmoid model, then we would expect the cores to switch on and off as the plasmoid decays and reforms. Now an interesting question would be, what would the galaxy look like in between pulses? So in other words, would the period in between a pulse ending and a new pulse starting make it seem as if the galaxy is dormant? Or is there still enough energy in it for it to seem like it is active just without a jet. What is interesting is that we have not really observed this behaviour before, but in Lerner's model we would predict that a galaxy with a plasmoid at its heart should indeed come back to life. The real question is, how long are these periods? Lerner made some estimates by scaling up his lab experiment, but this may well be the first ever in situ measurement of this phenomenon. Based on the estimates, it will remain active for another 10,000 years if it's based on the pulse, or 100,000 years until the actual plasmoid decays. Now an interesting point in their observation is that when the brightening event occurred, it initially occurred in just ultraviolet and visible light, and 60 days later it flared in X-ray. Now why would there be a lag between the ultraviolet and the X-ray? It is difficult to explain in either model. Now the emission of radiation in the plasmoid model is associated with the speed of the plasma. When it exceeds a threshold, the plasma starts to radiate intensely. It is possible that there is a lag in between the general radiation event and the creation of the beams. And this may explain a lag in the X-ray but that is pure speculation on my part. In the lab experiments, the time frames were so small that it is not possible to measure any lag between the plasma glowing and the beam formation. The good news is that astronomers are planning to study these galaxies for at least the next two years. The bad news 
is that this time frame may well be too short to really confirm if Lerner's model is the correct one. But if we can study these types of galaxies that are active, and we see galaxies both turning from inactive to active and active to inactive, then this may provide further evidence. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time. Yeah. <laughs>